You two wouldn't happen to know why I woke up to find a pile of potato chip crumbs on my bed, would you? Um, wh what do you mean by pile? I really hope I'm not sleep eating. What's, What's sleep eating? What if it turns into something worse, like sleep drinking? What if I wake up one morning and all of my coffee is gone because I drank it all in my sleep? Does caffeine even do anything for you anymore? Oh, what a nightmare. <laughs> What's, What's sleep eating? It's like sleepwalking, but you make a midnight snack. People who sleep eat will often arise in the early portion of the night, still completely asleep, and seek out as much food as they can get their grubby mitts on. They often end up eating weird and strange things. How strange? Like an entire bottle of ketchup, raw bacon, or buttered cigarettes. Butter what? what? Today's episode concerns sleep science. This is a very young science, and new research is coming out every day. As always, if you have any questions, please consult your doctor. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. A 53-year-old woman was referred to a sleep clinic by her family doctor for some strange behavior. She had no knowledge of any hereditary predispositions, having been adopted in early childhood, nor did she have a history of any neuropsychiatric diseases or drug abuse. She arrived at the sleep clinic complaining that her family had found her multiple times over the last year in a state of unconsciousness, snacking on fruits and nuts, and sometimes even cooking meals in the early hours of the night. Wait, what, what do you mean she would cook food while unconscious? I, I can barely even boil water when I'm awake! She was asleep, yet her body automatically sought out food. She would sometimes have multiple episodes in a single night, and each time she would walk around, eyes half closed, and would respond incoherently to her family's questions. In the morning, she would wake up with plates and cutlery scattered around her bed, though she could remember next to nothing about each episode. Leading up to her consultation, she would have anywhere from two to three episodes per week. That's not Gucci. Sometimes Grill stays up late eating chips in bed, and that's already too much. Far from Gucci. The report for this woman's case even includes a short clip of one of her episodes. <laughs> Doctors noted that there wasn't any precipitating event or stress, but they do note that she had been taking 10 milligrams of the sleeping pill Zolpidem per day for the last five years. But that's not even the craziest example of sleep eating. A 29-year-old truck driver had been snacking in his sleep from the age of 23, though the symptoms worsened once he got married at 27. On occasion, he would get up four to five times in a single night though he had no recollection of any of these events upon waking. One incident involved him getting onto his motorcycle and driving to a 24-hour convenience store when he couldn't find anything to eat at home. That's not real. It is, I promise. Oh no. He would often bang his shins or knees against furniture during his late night snack raids, leaving him with a persistent toe injury. Not only that, he almost burnt his house down, trying to sneak a quick cigarette during one of his midnight sorties. On that night, he was only awoken because hot ash from his cigarette fell onto his bare legs, burning him to consciousness. He had no history of any sort of abnormal sleep, nor any other psychiatric issues. There was no major precipitating event, but he did smoke a pack of cigarettes a day and consumed a glass of wine per night. I've heard of people falling asleep at the wheel, but what do they call it when you pass out on a motorcycle? A sleep cycle. Ah. Come on, that one was actually good. No, actually, it wasn't. In fact, your puns, or word murders as I like to call them, are the worst thing to happen to the English language. That's why I'm ditching it and learning a new one. Oh? Wait, I mean, yes, see? I can feel the change already. Très magnifique. That's because I'm using the number one language learning app in the world, and today's sponsor, Babbel. Remember when learning a language was hard? I do. News flash to Mrs. Crabtree from third grade French. Your flashcards sucked. The cow is on the farm. Super. How's that gonna help me order dinner for two in Paris? That's why I and 10 million other subscribers love Babbel. This one of a kind app prepares you for real world situations. The ver de juste de orange, s'il vous plaît. Uh, quoi? And here's the best part. You're learning from real people, not some computer-generated garbage that just guesses how words are pronounced. You know, like the kind Brew uses to butcher names in other languages. Um, okay, ouch. 
but fair. You wanna talk fair? Just look at this offer that Babbel is offering for our viewers. You could get up to 65% off at Babbel subscription. Just use our link in the description. A deal like that, Babbel? You're speaking my language. Now, au revoir, English. Adieu, man. Have fun with your terrible puns. <laughs> okay, hey. What do the French call a really bad Thursday? Huh? A tragedy. Sleep-related eating disorder, or SRED, is a parasomnia, or sleep disorder, similar to sleepwalking, in which the unconscious sleeper arises in the early mornings of their sleep cycle to seek out high-calorie, high-fat foods. Typically, patients tend to not have any memory of episodes. This is not to be confused with night eating syndrome, which is when someone wakes up in the night to binge eat. Sleep-related eating disorder is specifically when someone binge eats at night while they're still asleep. What? What causes it? The exact causes of SRED aren't explicitly known. Those with a history of sleepwalking are more likely to experience SRED. So far, there has been no evidence that it's genetic. Though it can be triggered by stress, or a comorbid sleep disorder, like sleep apnea, or restless leg syndrome. SRED usually occurs during NREM sleep in the first half of the night, and is connected to the transition to REM sleep. I know you've said it before, but I forget what REM and NREM means. That's rapid eye movement sleep versus non-rapid eye movement sleep. We generally shift between these two phases multiple times in a night. REM sleep is where we dream. And during that time, our brains disconnect from our bodies to keep us from acting out our dreams. Oh, so like sleepwalking and sleep eating couldn't take place during REM sleep because our bodies are turned off and they wouldn't be able to move, right? Spot on. SRED happens when you crave food so badly that you dream of eating and you're also still in NREM sleep and therefore can actually stand up and act out your dreams physically. Studies have found that among the general population, only about 5% are affected by SRED. But among those who already suffer from eating disorders, that percentage increases to 17%. Though they note that any kind of unhealthy relationship to food could trigger SRED, Researchers have found a connection between Zolpidem and SRED. What's Zolpidem? It's the generic name for the drug Ambien and other brands of sleeping pills. Michael H. Silber, MD, co-director of the Mayo Clinic Sleep Disorder Center, first found a relationship between Zolpidem and SRED back in 2002, but by 2006, he had seen some 20 more cases. Interestingly enough, the majority of patients tend to be women between the ages of 20 and 40, which some researchers suggest could be connected to unhealthy relationships to food, caused by the wider cultural expectations for women to maintain a specific body type. So, let's say I'm sleep eating, how would I fix it? It's tricky. We know that SRED is closely linked to lifestyle issues, so treatment will usually entail various changes monitored by a doctor, though the goal is usually to better regulate stress hormones and improve one's relationship to food. Your physician might ask you to participate in a sleep study or any number of other diagnostic tests to determine the best course of action for you. Reducing stress and anxiety is a major avenue that doctors will use to treat SRED, since those issues are linked to both sleeping and eating disorders regardless. Physicians greatly recommend reducing one's alcohol and caffeine intake. You have exceeded your recommended caffeine intake until 2023, but I don't judge. Disrupted sleep patterns may also cause SRED, so physicians would address the root of the issue with things like a CPAP machine for sleep apnea or medication for restless leg syndrome. Doctors will also look for any medications or other substances that are connected to SRED, such as the sleeping pill Zolpidem, as we saw before with our first case. Early studies have also shown that the anti-seizure medication, topiramate, may also help with treatment. It's really exciting when we first start finding connections we never expected to. Sleep science is such a new field that any one of you watching this video right now could be the ones to explore this frontier. Check out our video about sleep paralysis for more on sleep science in the description below. So, are, are you sleep eating? It's hard to say. It's really impossible to diagnose any sleep disorders on yourself, for the obvious reason that you're asleep during any episodes. And I could never recommend self-diagnosis for any health-related issue at all. I will remain silent no longer. What's that, Potts? Your home security camera footage from your bedroom offers a truer narrative. I'm totally awake! You can't move anything! You want my dad? It's okay, Grill. Okay, maybe I had a little snack last night, but that's none of your business anyways. Bro, bro, have, have you seen Avocado? I've looked everywhere! Avocado, the magical blanket friend. 
Not since lockdown, no. Oh no, um, where could he be? Where could Grill have gone? And where is Chill's blanket? Follow these thrilling tales in the latest installment of On the Hill. Click here to tune in.